What's up everyone, Takedown here. Welcome back to the final episode of my four part series. Like I said, whenever I started this series, I might expand into other countries' citizenship tests in the future, but as of right now, this is the final episode. Today, we're gonna to be finding out if my best friend who is American can pass the Canadian citizenship test. You guys watched the last episode in this series. Me being Canadian, I attempted to pass the American citizenship test and I failed, I only got 50%. So today, it's gonna to be all about bragging rights to see if Jack can get higher on the Canadian citizenship test than I did on the American citizenship test. So, let's get right into this. Okay, so today we're gonna to be doing the final episode and Jack is gonna be taking the Canadian citizenship test. Jack is American, just like the last one, or this pretty much whole series, it's gonna be 10, or sorry, 20 multiple choice questions. Pretty straightforward, this is the same one that I took for episode one, but Jack didn't watch that video yet, we're recording it all in the same day just for it to make sense. Jack, are you ready? I'm as ready as I'm gonna be. <laughs> Alright, so, question one. What are three main groups of Aboriginal peoples? First Nations, Metai, Inuit, Acadians, Metai, First Nations, French, English, First Nations, or Early Settlers, Metai, Inuit. It's not going to help you too much, but I can give you a tip. I am fifth generation Metai. I just feel like Inuits and, and with the tip that you gave me, um, that that's two of the three. The Early Settlers just sounds a little corny, and if I'm wrong, then, you know, by all means, I do not mean to be disrespectful, but true, it true. sounds a little corny. So I'm going to yeah. go with First Nations. Okay, Metai, so. And Inuit. All right. This one here, by the way, does not give the uh, results until the end. I should have meant that, mentioned that at the beginning. Um, who was John Bouchain, a popular governor general of Canada, a famous Canadian general, a Canadian Army General, or one of the Fathers of Confederation? I'm going to go with the, uh, what is it, Fathers of the Confederation. Okay, that one there? Mm-hmm. Okay, next question. When did the House of Commons recognize that the Quebecois form a nation within the United Canada? The options are 2006, 2001, 1986, or 1972. It's basically when did they, when were they recognized as uh, to form a nation? I would say I feel like it's pretty recent, but all of those are, you know, within the last 25 to 30 years, so that doesn't. Okay, so my options are 2001. Yep. 2006, 1986, or 1972. I think you just ruled out both those ones. So it's, so down it's to either 2000. 01 or 06. I'm going to go with 06. 06? Okay. Next question. Who is Marjois Turner Bailey? You're going to hate these questions by the end of it. Um, is, she, is I believe that's a she. Uh, is she a Olympian and a descendant of black loyalists, a famous Canadian settler, first woman to become prime minister, or a Canadian female athlete, the first Canadian female athlete? I'm almost certain this one's wrong, but this I've, I've got to go with first female prime minister. Okay. Because nice. I feel like y'all are a lot more progressive as a nation than we are, and y'all have had a female prime minister, and we hadn't had a female president. Uh, the next question, when did English settlement begin in Canada? 1510, 1497, 1610... Or 1720? Well, I feel like, if memory serves me correct, they started settling... I think they started settling the U.S. in, like, late 1500s, early 1600s. So I'm going to have to go with 14, the 1400s. 1497? Yeah. All right. Next question. Who established... The first European settlements. The English, the Irish, the French, the Spanish. Well, it's not the Spanish, because the Spanish 
didn't go that direction. They went more like Texas and Florida and Mexico and yeah. went the other direction. So I know it's not that. Um, you said the, so that would leave the French, the French, the English. Yep, and the Irish. I feel like the English got there first. English? Okay. I don't know why. Maybe it's because... Because <laughs> the majority of Canada the speaks majority. English? That's where I was going with it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, next one. Who passed the Quebec Act, Act in uh, 1774? Canadian Parliament, British Parliament, Quebec Parliament, French Majority. What was the year? 1774. Okay, so y'all weren't a nation yet, because we weren't a nation. And we were a nation before y'all were a nation. So it wouldn't have been Canadian Parliament. I don't think it was French Majority. It had to have been, what was it, you said British Parliament? British Parliament, that's one of them. I mean, I'm thinking, you know, Quebec, you know, Montreal... Uh, French, French mm -hmm. Canadian. Thinking, I'm thinking that's that's French majority. All right. Next question. Which act granted to the Canadas? I think that's supposed to be granted to the Canadians. I think they have a spelling error. Uh, for the first time, Freedom Act, Constitutional Act, Leg Legislative Act, or Confederation Act. Okay, so it's not the second one. It's not the last one. I, think I guess legislative act. At this point, I'm just guessing. Next question. Who was Lieutenant Colonel John Graves Simcoe, Upper Canada's first Lieutenant Governor, founder of Toronto, Lower Canada's Lieutenant Governor, founder of Toronto, Lower Canada's first Lieutenant Governor, founder of Ottawa, or the leader of the lower list. This one's a tricky one because I don't think you know the difference between Upper Canada and Lower Canada. I have absolutely no idea. Forget uh, I, Ottawa. The Ottawa? Okay. Next one. When did British Parliament abolish slavery throughout the empire? 1793, 1853, 1807, or 1833? So when did they abolish slavery throughout the empire? Is 1803 an option? No, 1807. Sounds good to me. <laughs> okay, that's the one I will choose for you. Next one here, name three fathers of confederation. Oh, I have to pronounce these names? Crap. Uh, Sir Etienne Pashko Tachi, Sir George Etienne Carter, and Sir John A. Macdonald, or La Fortune, Robert Baldwin, Joseph Howe, or Joseph Grant, Joseph Howe, James Macdonald, or Joseph Howe, Robert La Fortune, and the first one, which I had a hard time pronouncing. I'm going to go with C final answer. C final answer? That's what I like I to hear. No idea. Which phrase embodied the vision of the Dominion of Canada? Is it, O oh Canada, my home and native land? Dominion from sea to sea and from the river to the end of the earth? Dominion from ocean to ocean? Or the land of the free and strong? I'm going to go with home and native land because, like, that's I, the beginning of O oh Canada. I will say this. I chose the same exact one because I had no clue. Um... Whose portrait is on the $10 bill? Sir George Etienne Carter, Sir Louis Hippoly Lafortune, Sir Etienne Paschal Tachi, or Sir John A. Macdonald? We'll go with uh, Old Patchy. Old Patchy got to be on some money. All right. What made it possible for immigrants to settle in Western Canada? A completion of the Port of Vancouver the completion of the Canadian National Railway, the uh, giving free land to new settlers, or completion of the Pacific Railway. So unless y'all got a Pacific Railway, too, because I know we got one. See, that's what I, I'm banking on the fact that y'all don't. Okay, I like this. with the Port of Vancouver. Port of Vancouver? All right. Watch Vancouver be landlocked. 
<laughs> when were the Canada and Quebec pension plans devised? 1940, 1927, 1965, and 1970. This one was one I had to walk through, and I just had to think of the jobs back in those days, which would possibly have a pension. When was it 1960? 1965? Five, yeah. Alright, perfect. Um, what is La France a phony? I do not know what that is. I had a hard time with this question. Is it a region of Quebec? A French musical instrument? A French music festival? Or an international association for French speaking countries? Sound like an instrument. Okay, you want that one there? Yeah. Alright, just, just a reminder, I might be mispronouncing it right because I don't speak French. Well, that's fantastic. But do you still want to go with your answer? I might as well. Okay. Uh, next one here. Why is Terry Fox a Canadian national hero? He inspired people to contribute money for cancer research. He became the first elected president of Canada. He was the greatest hockey player of all time. Or he united Canada in the 19th century. Okay, so greatest hockey player of all time is subjective, so that's odd, obviously. It sounds like he did some good stuff. Yeah. Uh, I don't know why I'm hung up on the cancer research, but let's, let's do the cancer research. Okay. Next question. What are the responsibilities of the federal government? This is why I said the U.S. and the uh, Canadian one are very similar. So, is it matters of the national and international concern? matters of national concern, matters of international concern, or matters of provincial concern? That's uh, international and national. International and national? Yeah, if it's anything like the U.S., I'm, I'm thinking it's international and national. Okay. Next. Who has the right to vote in the federal election? A Canadian citizen at least 18 years old on voting day and on the voters list? An adult Canadian citizen? An adult Canadian citizen and permanent residence, or a Canadian citizen on the voters list? Of the uh, on voting day, 18 year old Canadian on the voters list. Perfect, bro. I'm going to be scared to get the results in a minute. Where do the majority of Canadians live? Rural areas, small towns, cities, or along the East Coast? This is the last question, by the way. Small towns. Small towns? Yeah. Alright, so are you ready for the results? Yeah. Okay, so... What? I thought you did so much better, bro. Well, you failed. <laughs> Just like I did when I took the American one. But you only got a 30%. You don't... <laughs> You only got six out of the 20 questions right, which surprised me because some of the ones that I thought you'd get wrong, you got those ones right. I was shocked in those ones. But when I did this test in the previous episode, well, sorry, when I did the American citizenship test because I'm Canadian, I got a 50%. So taking my, the opposite country's citizenship test, I did better, but as taking your own country's citizenship test, you did better. So that was really interesting. This is the four-part series where uh, Canadian and American try to take the Canadian and American citizenship tests. I think this was a lot of fun, but we're going to, for now, leave it as a four-part series. Depending on what you guys want, we might do a longer one in the future, and we might do other countries citizenship tests in the future, but how did you think this one went, Jack? I'm definitely not Canadian. <laughs> yeah, I definitely enjoyed this series. It gave me a new yeah, perspective. I, I will say a new perspective definitely because you think that you know things about your, country, your neighboring country, but doing this proved us wrong. <laughs> Big time. But uh, anything else you want to say? No, I don't know. It was a good, good little old experiment or a little I think yeah definitely this exactly this is also Jack's 
first structured video on my channel, well, second, but we recorded these back to back, so first series pretty much we did. Uh, if you guys want to see more from Jack in the future, let us know down in the comments below, because we're always trying to come up with ideas. This whole series was actually Jack's idea. He actually had the idea of one video, and I turned it into a four-part series. Just have more fun with it, but uh, I'm going to leave this video here. Hope you guys did enjoy. I'll see you guys in the next one. Please take care. Peace.